So let's get ready to hear Mr. Brian Devine give us all this wonderful information. Thank you. So if there's a question, if I go too fast, if I use terms that don't make sense, just stop. It's very informal. I want this to feel more like a workshop. And we'll stop and we'll talk about how you can actually use some of this material so that you can feel like when you go back to work on Monday, you have things that you can put into place. All right, so let's get into the basics. What is social media? Uh, Web 2.0 media it really just means that it's something that people can interact with. And so a lot of times you'll hear all the different things being tossed out about what social media, what's the best blog, anything where people can change the content or interact with that content, not just point click, but actually change it, that's essentially social media. Now I have some, some fun stuff here. Don't worry about this, you do not need all of it. Let's see if this pops up. This is what's on the landscape right now. So you do not need know how to use every one of these pieces of the puzzle. But just know that they're there. So when somebody says, um, how many of you heard about Pinterest? Have you heard Pinterest? Yeah? Okay. <laughs> so, once you hear about it, it doesn't mean you immediately need to start using it. It means that you need to kind of put that on your list, the back burner, start following. Have put somebody on the team and say, find out if that's something that we should use. Or call your marketing person and say, is that something that we can or shouldn't do on? Don't let it overtake you because it changes so fast. Let's talk about who's using social media. This is one of the questions that I get a lot. The largest increase right now is people over 60. Now, what typically I hear is, I don't really think that I need to do that. My market is not really going to use social media, and that's certainly not true. The market is growing so fast. And does anyone have a smartphone? A couple people? Do you know what the, after speaking on the phone, do you know what the second most useful thing is for a smartphone? Social media. So you know about 90% of the time when people are walking like this, they're actually engaged in social media. They're talking to friends and family and doing something through social media. So, baby boomers, huge part of that, that growth. We want to make sure that you're there. More business owners are utilizing it, and then if you're not, the competition is. That changes the landscape a little bit. We want to make sure that you're out in front of the competition as opposed to chasing, because this does affect what's called the search engine optimization. We'll talk about that in detail. Oh, I thought this was fascinating. Starbucks is 8 million. Facebook fans. That was, I, I, I was shocked. I did not think the numbers would be that high. <coughs> That's not why people just want other people to know that they like their coffee, which is a fascinating phenomenon to me. But we want to make sure that we can take advantage of that. Let's talk about outbound versus inbound marketing. Traditional marketing is outbound, right? Push. Trying to get your message out to people, hoping that you're getting the message in front of them at the right time and across with your fingers. It's called interruption marketing. People kind of tune it out. Right now, the average person gets over 3,000 messages every day between TV, radio, and all, everything that you can imagine. So if you're getting the largest 3,000 messages and you send out, let's say, a postcard that says, hey, I'm in town, plus the straight TV, do you think that's going to get the message to Probably not. So it takes a lot more now to get your message through than it used to. So internet marketing is about inbound. It's called permission-based. So rather than interrupting people, you're gaining their permission to give them your message. They're deciding to hear from you. This means everything from search engine optimization, social media, blog, newsletters, everything that you can do that they're saying, yes, please, give it to me, that's Permission marketing. One of the best ways to take advantage of permission marketing is with free trials or offers. 
And so obviously if you have a free consultation or a free exam, let people know about that. I'm, I'm curious, how many in the room have been told not to use the word free? Alright, just, just a few of that. Okay. The reason I ask is that uh, probably about six, seven years ago, I was hearing over and over again from all the people that were know, speaking saying, don't use the word free, you're a doctor, you don't want that word, it's not going to be a positive uh, term for you. The reality is today, when people see the word free, they respond. If you see the word complimentary, you might have to look it up, and they won't. <laughs> I know it sounds terrible, but it's true. People don't necessarily know what you mean by that. Free can't be confused. It's free, I want it. Or at least, if it's free, it's more likely to get through the filter of those 2,000 other messages. So don't, don't shy away from that. If you're unsure, because there are some times where you have a certain clientele in your office that you like. If you start putting the word free out there, that level of clientele may change. So, so it's a matter of testing in your area what changes in your office if you use the word free versus complimentary. I have had people use paradis. I don't think that will ever work. But you can test it, right? And that's what's amazing about the internet. You click a button, you change what you want to change, and then you start tracking the results and see what happens. And if you don't like it, or things are changing the way that you want, click a button again and change it to something else. So play around with that. Don't just take my word for it or anyone else's word for it. See what works best for you in your office. Because the word free, if you are slow, can help you get busy. But it can also put a lot of people in your chairs that you might not want in your chairs. So do that, do that research first. But if it'll help, give it a shot, and then, and then you can test it against anything else you've done in class. Any questions about that? Good? Okay. Let's talk about websites. This is this is the key, right? So if you're going to talk about social media, you have to have a website. Now, if you have a website that needs some work, start there. Don't worry about social media, don't worry about blogs, don't worry about anything until your website is up to speed. What do I mean by up to speed? There's a couple of quick fixes that you can do right away. And if you've heard me speak before, I always cover this because it drives me crazy when I look at somebody's site and I can't find their phone number. What is the one thing that you want your website to do? I don't know about you, I don't want it to make people call me. Right, so I want my phone number easy to find. So very quick fix. Make sure your phone number is visible. I highly recommend you put it in the upper right hand corner. The reason for that is that Google, uh, whether you love it or hate them, you do a lot of research and you find that people tend to look at the upper right of your phone number. So put it there. Smiling faces in color. Some people like black and white, some people like sepia, they like things that look really fancy and cool. And that can work for you and maybe 20% of the people that look at your site, but what we know statistically is that smiling faces in color improve compliance. So what that means is, if people are seeing smiling faces and you ask them to do something, they're much more likely to do it. So if you see smiling faces, it's pretty helpful, okay? Tell visitors what you want them to do. Does everyone have something like that where you say, do this now to get that? It's usually missing. And what I find fascinating is that um, everyone's heard of Disney, right? I hear a lot of clients that say, well, I don't want to be pushy, I don't want to tell people what to do. If you ever go to Disney's website, go to any one of their properties, any one of their websites, and you will see that they are basically telling you what to do in every single three sentences. And you're happy with it. It's amazing. Basically, you go there and you start looking for information, and they say, do this, to get that, okay. And then they say, do this, to get that, okay. And you don't feel bad. So it's just a matter of making sure that you're talking about what they get. Not, not what you want, but what they get. Make sure you have something like that anyway. Absolutely want easy navigation. If we were talking about websites alone today, I would actually show you a series of slides where <coughs> this is a beautiful website. It has to be about a $12,000 website, and it takes seven different steps in order to contact the audience. That's not easy navigation, okay? Please make sure that your navigation is very easy. There's the left side, across the top, that's, that doesn't really change as far as we've seen. No, as far as we're actually, 
told to make it six levels, but maybe so if you click here, and then this shows up, and you click there, and make it really, really easy. And right now, we're finding that because of the way social media is changing how people interact, and because of phones, and people use tablets, image-based navigation is starting to work really well, even on desktops. Now, I was talking with my babysitter, and she was asking what I was doing. I was explaining that I was putting in this presentation for social media. Of course, as I'm talking to her, she's, she's on her phone. I'm having to guess. Social media. Yeah. So I, I realized I really can't, in all fairness, talk about how to utilize social media without making sure that you know the need of the website. Because what's happened is people are spending all their time on social media on their phones. So if you have done something really well on social media to engage with that, to get them to want to see what you're offering, to want to go to your website, don't break the communication at that point so that they can't see it on your, on your, on your phone. Make sure you have a mobile optimized website. There's lots of ways to do that. There's lots of companies that can help you with that. It has become much easier. About a year ago, it took, it took some coding, it took some know-how. Nowadays, it is just so simple. So, so let, me, let, let that be part of your early marketing package. You really want to make sure you have a mobile website. Um, but this was what was interesting. 39% of the time spent on social media is now on mobile. So again, don't break the line of communication at that point. How does it they can't actually see your website? Has everyone done that? Everyone is, uh, how many people have a mobile, mobile website, mobile version? If, if you want, go ahead and, and look at it the next time you can. Look at it on your phone. See what it looks like. You'd be, you'd be amazed at what it can look like. And sometimes um, we, we find that there's little elements in websites called flesh. You might have heard this over the last 10 years with iPhones, iPads. They will not run flesh. And just recently, Google and Android have decided they don't want to support flash either. So if you have flash on your website, fancy cool stuff, it breaks. It just won't work. So one of two things will happen. One person is looking at the site will go, oh, they have a site, I'll go check it later. It's really what's going to happen. One is likely to go, oh, it looks like their site isn't working and they're out of business. They're obviously not concerned when they go to somewhere else. So that's what we don't want to have. All right. <coughs> I thought it would be helpful to kind of give you a little bit more detail on why mobile and social are so important. Half of all mobile searches are performed on mobile phones. Now this data is almost a year old, and, and at that point it's half, so this keeps the point. By 2014, mobile internet users will overtake desktop. So this is not something that might happen sometime down the road. This, this is happening right now. So within a year, the expectation is desktops are going to go away. And, and that includes laptops. So when they talk about mobile devices, they're talking about phones and tablets. Pretty amazing. A third of all Facebook, 700 million users will use Facebook mobile. Does anyone does see how old this data is? This is almost a year old. They're already at 1.1 1 .1 million. So if you're going to use social media, and Facebook is going to be a part of that, that system for you, you want to make sure it works on mobile. 165 million Twitter users, and half of them are using Twitter mobile. Now, a lot of people thought Twitter was going to die out. And I was the one that just kind of kept watching. And what we're seeing is that media, news media, television, is making sure that Twitter engagement stays high. So let's not, let's not pretend that, that Twitter is going to go away. It is absolutely vital. Not so much your communication with people, but when it comes to search engine optimization. Now, I will cover that, but there's some fascinating data about how Twitter will affect your search results. 200 million YouTube views every day on mobile devices. Now, do you think that People are watching videos on here because they look better than on their desktop. Yeah, it's cool. 90% of the time when I ask why is someone's watching it on their phones, because they can. So if you're going to buy a nice phone that does all these bells and whistles, you want to use it. Video is a great way to use that. And I, I, I have to admit, I do the same thing. So oh, video, I can do that. So absolutely want to take advantage of that. 
Women is 35 to 54, the most active group. Would you say in this room, most of you feel like your best possible target market to talk to is in this All right, let's keep that in mind. 91% of all internet access is to social activity. Well, let that sink in. It's a social So that's where you want to be. Nine out of ten cell phone searches result in actual potential purchase or visiting a business. Nine out of ten. So what we're talking about now is that when somebody is on their desktop or their laptop and they do a search on Google and they find you, more often than not, they're looking for information. So hopefully you're going to provide them lots of information and compelling reasons and benefits to trust you. Well, they're not necessarily ready. When they're on their phone, it's because they're looking at right now. It's, it's immediate, they want something, they're looking to call you. So again, you have a mobile website, tap to call. Make it so easy. It's like, you know, tap to call for your free consultation. All set. So don't break that communication. 88% of local information seekers take action within a day. That's still very high. Local information seekers are action oriented. So you're probably seeing a trend. You're kind of trying to drill this in. As, as, we, as we talk about social media, you have to be talking about mobile as well. Because they go hand in hand. Work hand. So, three out of five searches are done using a mobile device. Mobile coupons get 10 times the redemption rate of traditional coupons. Does anyone here test the coupons? Yeah. Okay. So what, what, what is going on here? Why is it that it's a mobile coupon that gets 10x redemption rate versus just standard coupon? Well, with a standard coupon, you either have to clip it, you have to remember it, or you put it in your box. I don't, I don't know what you We have a box in our kitchen full of coupons that we have never used and never will. Why we do that, I don't know. But for some reason, say, oh, this is a good deal. We should do that. It makes us feel like we're going to somehow save money, and then it's now off of our mind. It's on the phone. It's right here. So the next time we're open, right, I have a coupon for that. So that can be translated into any industry. So it's just about thinking, being creative about it. So if you're going to use a coupon, or if, you're, if you had thought about putting a, you know, what call it, a belcher box, which is the little dashes around the coupon and the ads you run, please put that on the internet as well, because that would get you the as opposed to, great idea, I should call them if it goes in the box. Okay? Moms, more likely than anyone else to have a smartphone. Moms are pretty good at Okay, so I'm off my soapbox. Action items. Make sure your site is mobile optimized. There are two ways for your site to be mobile optimized. It used to be, probably in the last four months, that you really needed to have what's called an m.subdomain. So it would be m.mydomain.com. And that's how you told the search engine this is a mobile optimized website. Well, Google and the search engines keep getting smarter. So now you can have just your website domain with no m dot or dot mobi or anything like that and make it what's called dynamic so that no matter what kind of a device you're using it will keep changing size and the search engines know that means it's mobile optimized it's not a mobile website it's mobile optimized if you want to have better search results on mobile phones i highly recommend still that you use an m dot subdomain or dot mobi the dot mobile just means it's, it's basically saying to Google mobile only. So the mobile website. And dot the mobile website, not to anything else here. Google is now serving up different search results depending on whether you're on a phone or a desktop. So you want to make sure that you think that you So if you have dynamic site, it will still work. And that's if you're going to be combining social media with any of your marketing, that will work. If not, make a plan to add that to your marketing. And it's, we're not talking about spending ten thousand dollars. These are not very expensive. Talk to whoever built your website. Make sure that they can make it whole. And it's usually very straightforward. 